Okay, this is really, really, really cool. Um, this is the Glover Machine Works uh, story uh, display exhibit. It takes up probably a good 25% of the uh, the museum, but it, it's it's well worth seeing, and we're going to go and uh, check it out. This, uh, this is all post-war, and they started out as a machine shop, and uh, later built into or developed into a um, a, a builder, a, um, a locomotive builder. They, they, they built trains, locomotives. Uh, not the train, the, the engine that pulled the train. Um, and these little displays explain some of it. These, this again, this is all post-war. Between the uh, Civil War and the advent of electricity, um, Steam. Everything was uh, powered by steam. Engines, locomotives, machines, everything. So, oh, this is, these are steam engines. Coal, wood. Uh, used used uh, coal or wood to, to fuel. This area is called the pattern shop. These are original patterns from the Glover factory um, used as molds to cast uh, the, the metal part, the steel iron part. The, um, these people did everything top to bottom beginning in, um, except this, the boilers. They did not manufacture the boilers. They uh, had the boilers built for them. Um, these are some of the molds for some of the things. Some of the parts. This is called the pattern shop. This is pretty neat. This is a... An example. Okay. And this shows the foundry. They created a foundry. And these are really cool statues. I'm not sure what the connection is. Um, they were in a department store. They were later uh, displayed at Stone Mount or uh, in the rotunda at the Capitol, and later uh, donated to Stone Mountain, and then wound up here. So um, they're not made out of metal. They're made out of some sort of a composite plastic back in the day, but. They're very cool. I like to have them at home. Okay, this is the shop. We're gonna go little by little. Uh, this is the, a replica of what this factory would have looked like, the factory floor. Um, this is the machinist area. And the machinist was the, uh, basically the smartest guy in the room. He had to know all the math and the chemicals and compositions and all that sort of stuff of the metal and how to you know, gear up everything to, to make it work. So you have worked closely with the um, foundry people and the pattern people. Um, this shows uh, an electric engine from 1910. So this is after electricity was invented. This is no longer steam. Um, <clears throat> and it operated a pulley. I've seen this sort of system before used with uh, water power. Um, but it, it, this was the main engine and it turned all the other engines. You can see from the belts, everything is connected. Of the lathe. Oh, 
something called a uh, stroke slaughter. No idea what that would have done. Pretty neat. Pretty exciting. That's a drill press. Even I know that. It's just a fascinating how they made the belts twist around and everything else. Floor drill power hacksaw. That was a hacksaw, that right there. Very neat. Very cool how all the belts fit together to run everything. And this is a uh, diorama of the 1904 version of the Glover Machine Works. Love that kind of stuff. You can see doing that. Okay, and this is the <clears throat> main floor. This is really cool. The uh, locomotive we're seeing here was built by these people sold to a company on spec the company went under couldn't pay they went and repossessed it brought it back here and that's it 100 more than 100 years ago and this is an example of what they call the erecting shop that would have laid everything out on the <clears throat> correct gauge that they according to specifications on their blueprints uh, railroad tracks <clears throat> and uh, And put it all together. Pratt and Whitney, planer. So it's pretty exciting, pretty, pretty good deal here. <clears throat> 